has provided seed grants across the state since 2006. And um, each region has $20,000 every other year, every two years. And um, for this year, we have four seed grants and we have two of those um, that we're going to highlight today. So first, I'm going to start with uh, Alicia Belton. She is um, helping, she put together a really amazing project called Camp C Architecture. Uh, Alicia is the principal architect and founder for Urban Design Perspectives. And um, she is going to talk about their project and how we, how they adjusted because they still were able to do their project over the summer, even with the pandemic. And we got a chance to meet in person early in January. And as you've probably seen, I like to take pictures with people that I meet and, and groups. So Alicia, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you tell us a little bit of, about the project? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. And we really appreciate your support of our camp. So um, I think we have some slides. I don't have control over the slides. There we go. So uh, again, my name is Alicia Belton. I am the, the founder and principal architect of Urban Design Perspectives. And we were able to do this camp see architecture with our partners, 21st Century Academy. They are an enrichment after school program that's focused on STEM for students of color in North Minneapolis. And we really believe that through our camp, we were able to accelerate climate justice. And we were very intentional about the name Camp C Architecture. We wanted them to see the energy, obviously. And so the camp was around um, learning and teaching them about renewable energy, the different types. We also wanted them to learn about everyday things that they could do tangible things like changing light bulbs and reusing bags when they go shopping as, as ways to reduce their energy consumption. We also wanted to focus on seeing equity. And in architecture, there are about 116,000 architects in the United States, of which there are only about 2% that are architects of color. In Minnesota, there are 21 Black architects and only four Black women. So it was really important for us for us to, uh, to, to show them what we do as a professional and to expose them to that. And a lot of times, uh, the reasons we have that diversity in the profession is because a lot of these youth don't know anyone that, that are architects and, and know what they do. So then the last piece of it is seeing the environment. And architects have a, uh, a key seat at the table when it comes to designing buildings. Um, we understand you know, how buildings get placed on the site, what kind of energy gets used, what kind of components, be them locally sourced or not, um, and really helping them to understand the decisions that go, go involved in making buildings. And so we believe that through them seeing energy and equity and in the environment that um, we are empowering them to become the next generation of energy ambassadors. So next slide, please. So this year, the camp was, well, let me just back up. This is the second year that we've done the camp. Uh, last year we was, was our pilot year, and we offered the camp every day for a half a day. And this year, you know, due to COVID, we had to pivot a little bit. And so we made these creative energy kits that we delivered in, in weekly modules. And so each module uh, focused on a different topic. Day, day one modules was around designing for climate change. And really that was introducing them to what renewable energy was from solar, wind, water, geo, geo, um, and geo, I'm sorry, biomass and geothermal. And then also what kinds of active and passive strategies that they could do for uh, building and designing buildings. Day two of the, the camp was around designing your campaign. And we really wanted to talk about um, climate change and not only just in the uh, environmental uh, aspect, but also given what has happened in our community around the murder of George Floyd, we thought it was really important to be a, to have them have an opportunity to talk about uh, the climate of our community. And so we gave them examples of the kind of climate uh, campaign, climate change campaigns that we wanted to create. So if it was environmentally focused, it would be something like, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. We all know that and go green. But, you know, also other kinds of platforms um, in terms of climate change in our community, Black Lives Matter. And we also asked them to think about, you know, uh, climate, um, 
uh, campaigns that were focused on products and services. And so you think about like ads in the Super Bowl, for instance, and so products and beverages. So we said, you know, these are platforms that companies use to tell them about what they're advocating and what they want you to, to, um, to consider. So like Got Milk. So really it's just a broad, a broad spectrum of having them, you know, what is, what is your voice in this and what are you passionate about and what do you want to share? So then the next day, the next week, I'm sorry, was about seeding your future and really what kinds of things are you doing today that will make for a better future tomorrow. So really helping them hone in on what their client change message was and um, putting together a sustainability action plan. The next module was designing a solar playhouse and we got a lot of great feedback from that. They got to build a playhouse where they actually got to have lights that worked from solar fairy lights and they, um, they really enjoyed that. And then the last one was designing your community. So really thinking about what is it that makes a sustainable community and uh, the, the, the elements of that and what kinds of things that they wanna see in their community. So next slide, please. So the camp in itself, the way we approached it was a, a multi-sensory experience. And we really wanted them to see architecture in North Minneapolis. And so we focused on projects that we had participated in and had designed and done in North Minneapolis. In this uh, first picture with the house, this particular house, we were actually doing our project in it. So they got to visit a construction site. So um, they got to see what was behind the walls. And then after that, we had them do some sketching. And so really helping them to, to hone those kinds of skills. Um, after visiting sites, often what we would do, we would go back to the, the classroom experience and they would build structures. And so in the bottom picture, you can see that they're building structures with toothpicks and marshmallows. And so that became kind of a competition of, you know, who could build the highest tower. And yes, they did get to, to eat their snack. And so, again, looking for ways to engage them. Uh, they got to build their uh, their own dream model house in the in the in the picture next to the to the um, toothpick and marshmallow one. Um, if you look at the the center photos, you'll see that we took them out in the community as well. So we took a visit to the Stone Arch Bridge so that they could see the uh, St. Anthony Falls and see how water energy played into um, making electricity for the mills for the businesses that were along along the Mississippi River. And we also took a tour of a church in North Minneapolis that actually has solar panels on their roof. So they got to climb up on the roof and see how these solar panels were working. And then the last picture, we also uh, did science experiments. And so we had uh, kids that had many solar panels and we would take them outside or use lamps within the, the building and see how those solar panels activated lights and, and miniature fans. So really, again, this idea of a multi-sensory experience where they could see, where they could touch and taste the, um, the things that we were trying to convey. So next slide, please. Um, so for this, uh, this is this year. And so you can see that we had to pivot due to COVID. Um, we would deliver these kits every week and the kits were comprised of an instructional booklet that had all the lessons in it and all the activities that were associated with that particular topic and they had all the components that they needed to do those projects and so um, this particular one in the middle was the solar energy the solar playhouse and they got to design the floor plan on the inside they got to design what kind of materials went on the outside and then the roof was um, solar fairy lights lights that they wrapped around poster board so that became their solar roof and then their the pinwheel over there was the example of um, the windmill so really we tried to help them to to, to be creative and to um, really understand and incorporate all these different elements of of what it means to, to have a sustainable project um, be it you know building something or making a snack or doing some kind of collage and some kind of art project next slide please and then here, this is just some projects that we did this year, a few more of them, uh, to get them thinking about using what you have. That's one of the values that we have in our practice. What will you do with what you have? And so the center picture, we encouraged them to find things that were around their house to make uh, an image, a self-portrait of themselves. So in this particular one, this student used duct tape for the clothing, and then they used cork for their hair. Um, you can see on the upper right hand, 
photo where they were using magazine photos and um, we encouraged them to, to cut out words that reflected what their sustainability action plan was going to be. And so you can see work together and home and home is appropriate as many of us are probably at home right now. But um, really, you know, what were the things that they were on their hearts that they were advocating for that they wanted to see change. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that they've designed uh, their, their um, dream home. And then the dream home in the center picture moved over as part of a neighborhood. So, you know, they were really talking about in this um, picture, what made a sustainable neighborhood. So green spaces, we talked about bike lanes, we talked about having bus shelters with solar panels and um, really, you know, how do you come together as a community to talk about you know, access to those things, transportation and, and um, green spaces and, and healthy communities. So to helping them to see that it's just, the choices that they make are not just for themselves, but they go beyond and impact impact um, each other and globally. And in this, fat, this last slide um, photo, you'll see that they um, uh, made a tower. And so the tower, again, was reusing the things that you have. And uh, this particular student um, used a box of, you know, that had snacks in it and uh, cans and tin cups and uh, made a tower and then they were thinking that, you know, being a castle, you would use water to power the building. So, you know, um, I would say we, we, we did the best that we could with the situation at hand this summer. Um, I would say that uh, we really miss being in person with them. And we have a lot of empathy for what teachers are going through right now and trying to deliver education distance wise. Um, so we missed that personal connection, but we were so, so proud of them and really, you know, they got the message of, you know, how can we reduce our energy consumption through renewable energy lessons and really understanding what their carbon footprint was and how they can make personal tangible choices to reduce those um, metrics. Um, you know, how can they think creatively to, to reuse the things that they have and um, make projects from things right within their home and then recycle them into to, to other things. So, um, so yeah, so we had a lot of fun and, you know, this is definitely something that we will continue to do as a practice and um, just so, so grateful for, for your support, so. Thank you so much, that was wonderful. I'm gonna pivot and um, bring in my friend, Christelle. Um, so um, I just actually delivered the news today um, to Christelle that we, um, we originally funded a project um, for them to work with um, junior and senior um, high schoolers um, in North Minneapolis on renew having a renewable energy conference. And um, those plans had to keep shifting and moving because of COVID. It was just really, really hard to um, try to do that work. Um, and so she's actually going to be talking about um, another effort that she's been working on called Solstar. And today we talked about shifting gears from the conference to supporting her staff time and efforts around this incredible project that you're going to hear about right now um, in North Minneapolis. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to turn it over to Christelle. Join us. Thank you. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so again, my name is Crystal Porter and I am the executive director of MN Renewable Now. Um, MN Renewable Now became a, uh, an official nonprofit in January of 2019, so we're very new. Uh, we took off immediately with the Power North program, which educated North Minneapolis residents about climate change and the importance of renewable energy. Um, we were able to get over 80 households to make the switch to renewable energy in 2019 alone, and we were able to sign up over 50 households for um, energy efficiency audits and installations within the North Green Zone in just in February of this year. Um, so um, we're actually kicking off the Power North program again uh, with the support of Hennepin County Green Partners and, and plan to double that, um, the renewable energy and energy efficiency opt-ins uh, from the last go around. So really excited about that. Um, uh, next slide, if you could. Um, so that's kind of in, inspired us to kind of move forward and do some more um, work. Um, and it's, it's interesting because with, with COVID, we, um, we, it kind of put us in a place where we could start to think big and start to think about what we could really do to really make a, a big impact. Um, when it comes to lowering our carbon footprint in North Minneapolis. 
Um, so why North Minneapolis? Um, so in some neighborhoods in North Minneapolis, we see AMIs, area median incomes as low as $28,000 annually due to the, the history of poor city planning, lack of community engagement. Um, North Minneapolis has, has had uh, many environmental justice issues in relation to development. So North Minneapolis is a historical black neighborhood and is the highest black population, has the, la uh, the highest black population density rate in the state. Um, next slide. <laughs> So um, this picture actually is something that I took from a, a news um, story that um, was reported in 2017 um, as Minnesota being the second worst state for black people in the United States. And which, uh, you know, is was actually kind of a shock to me, even though I am black and living in North Minneapolis and have lived in poverty pretty much my entire life. Um, and I still was shocked by hearing this. Um, much like other parts of Minneapolis, um, North Minneapolis has very old housing stock, but the unique problem that North Minneapolis has is the lack of maintenance and upkeep due to an over 80% rental rate in many of its neighborhoods, along with absentee landlords coupled with the lowest area median income in the state. Um, Minneapolis Public Schools has the largest exodus rate coming from children of color, especially seeing the highest rate in North Minneapolis. These schools have the lowest graduation rate and test scores for black children. The city also has a history of planning highly toxic developments in and around communities of color, such as the Herc, which is the um, Hennepin County incinerator, which burns the trash for the entire Hennepin County area. And then also um, a couple uh, roof shingle um, companies um, or, um, or asphalt processing, which was actually designated by the EPA as a major source of um, air toxic emissions. So um, having that, um, we were definitely designated as one of the green zones. There's a north and south green zone. And North Minneapolis has um, some very, um, very interesting rates when it comes to, um, to health and, um, and air pollution. Um, next slide, please. So, um, so as I as I as I said before, um, as you can see by this slide, actually, um, black people are three times uh, less likely to own a home, ten times more likely to be incarcerated, on an average, bring in less than half the annual income of white households, and have nearly triple the unemployment employment rate of of their white neighbors. And it, it's interesting when you look at the slide that. You look at the pre pre COVID um, unemployment rate of Black Minnesotans having an 8.8 percent unemployment rate and whites having a 3 percent unemployment rate, and that is um, is tending to trend um, upwards and um, seems to be about the same numbers um, even during the the time of COVID since uh, July 2020, where we see the unemployment rate of our, our Black community up to 24 percent. So that's obviously why we chose to focus our attention on, on North Minneapolis, even though we are MN Renewable Now, and we tend to partner with um, all organizations in, in Minnesota um, around um, climate issues. Um, we, like I said before, we wanted to think big and, and wanted to um, do something big. And so um, we uh, came out with this uh, the the idea of how can we lower North Minneapolis's carbon footprint as um, as fast as possible in in a big way, um, and so um, it's kind of I wanted to call it the Power North 2.0, uh, but uh, my 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 group had come out with um, the Soul Star program, and Soul Star um, is um, basically a program where we are um, retrofitting. 24 rooftops in North Minneapolis with solar. Um, next slide. So we wanted to be really intentional about how we rolled out this program. Um, we've worked very hard to address the, the racial disparities um, in, um, in North Minneapolis and especially with our organization, which is located in North Minneapolis. So our board um, is comprised entirely of North Minneapolis residents. 
um, and um, all but one is um, people of color, BIPOC people. Um, our staff is um, completely women of color that reside in North Minneapolis. Um, and then for the Soul Star program, we wanted to make sure that we were not just addressing um, racial inequities through um, through the the lack of ownership of solar on the rooftops in North Minneapolis, but we wanted to make sure that we were creating jobs within North Minneapolis as well. And so we set out and it took about the entire year to come up with this team, but we have our engineer, both residential contractors, our solar installers, even our solar assessor and our entire, entire engagement team are all people of color who live or came, recently lived within North Minneapolis. Um, and the reason why we're identifying only 24 rooftops is because if anyone, and, and some people who listen to this probably know this, this significant number is um, if we go over 24, we would have to actually register as a public utility company. So the plan is let's get this project done and let's um, do another 24. And hopefully we're, my, my major goal is to, to get 24 done every six months until we cover all the rooftops in the North Green Zone. Um, with um, solar and we'd like to move it to the South Green Zone as well. Um, so we're actually um, rolling it out now. We're actually receiving applications currently um, and we plan to start assessing roofs next week, um, which is crazy, um, but we plan to get half of the roofs done before um, the end of this year and the other half um, before spring of 2021 is over. Um, it's an amazing project and if you would have told me that I would be working on a project like this a year ago, I would have said, yeah, right. I don't believe that, that I would be doing something like this, but um, I'm super excited um, and we're, we're doing this through um, a, a mixture of private investors and crowdfunding. Um, which is a, a really unique model that was actually used in the Red Lake um, um, Nation, and they were able to pull off a really large um, solar um, project through this, this unique um, funding. And um, we're hoping that this, is, this will put us in a position where we'll be able to, um, to fund these projects moving forward. I was reading an um, article today and it said, oh, we're going to, we're probably going to see renewable energy be free by 2030. And uh, I'd love to see that. Well, that's still 10 years from now. So hopefully um, what we're doing now is just kind of paving the way and, and being a model of how we can get this done and how we can provide solar um, for everyone, even lower income uh, communities, um, because it is very uh, difficult to come up with $30,000 or even get um, financing to be able to, to um, complete projects like this. Thank you so much for your huge vision and your passion and your commitment to your community. Um, I'm, I, I know, I, I've been around, I know a lot of um, installers and people who work on solar, the, the fact that you, your commitment to getting all black owned, you know, black engineers, contractors engagement, I mean, that's a, that's a huge feat and um, it's, it, it, you're so tenacious and um, thank you for all of your work. Um, I'm sure you're a community gem. I'm sure that um, we're going to see you for years on. I love and I love that every six months. So um, thank you. Um, we have just a couple of minutes for um, if there are any questions for either Alicia or Crystal. Um, and um, then after that, I just have just some uh, 30 seconds for the closing remarks. Um, but the, you know, we have a couple minutes for questions if folks have questions. Um, I think I'm trying to think if I didn't see any of that. There are no questions there. And um, I think that we put into the chat. Um, oh, we did just put into the chat. We put in a little bit about uh, Power North. And then we also put in the um, givebutter.com, um, the donation site, so folks can provide donations if they feel so inclined. Um, oh, um, we have a question. Will Camp C continue in future years? So, Alicia. There we go, unmute. 
Um, yes, we will. We are actually thinking about what we're going to do next year, taking the idea of the slope solar playhouse and actually trying to build one. So that it's a oh, demonstration yeah. model of, you know, the, the idea of, of, of linking playing to very tangible ways of how we can have a sustainable home. So yes, there are plans to do the camp next year. That's wonderful. And then we did have another question come in the chat. Um, there was, oh, sorry, there was one in the chat. And um, so uh, definitely a community gem about um, Soulstar. Are there any openings for Soulstar? And I don't know if they mean openings like um, roofs. Have you already, you've already identified all of the roofs? No, actually we have not. Uh, we're currently receiving the applications. Um, and then we're gonna go, we, we have, hence the solar assessor, our solar assessor will go out and assess the roofs um, to make sure that we're able to, um, to um, retrofit those roofs. Um, they have to, there's certain things like they've gotta be south facing, not all the time, we can work with them. Um, if they're not, and then also they, it depends on how, what the condition of the roof is as well. Um, but we are currently accepting applications. You can go to the MN Renewable Now um, website and um, just go to the Soul Star page. And then there is a survey that you can fill out. And once we, we get that, we will send out an application for you to be able to um, be one of the candidates to receive the, the rooftop solar. Um, retrofit. Dan, Dan put it in the chat before you were done saying the sentence. Dan. <laughs> Dan's so good that way. Um, and then uh, how does, so how does Soulstar recruit employees is another question. And then do you think um, any um, North um, Minneapolis schools would be open to adopting more efficient school bus fleets, which is, we might not get to that question, but um, why don't you answer about the employees? Um, so anyone who is working in solar, um, as far as like installing, installing solar, those are, we always could use more, um, more solar installers, um, definitely. And if there's anybody on this call um, or in this meeting that um, knows of any installers that live within the North Minneapolis area um, or work for a North side solar installer, that would be great. Um, and we are contracting all of them, so they were, they're not going to be our employees, so it's totally fine. We'll take anybody that is doing that work, um, and yeah, just tell them to contact MN Renewable now, and we'll, we'll figure out them on the team. Awesome. Thank you so much, Crystal and Alicia. So glad. We're so proud of the work you're doing, and, and for us to be able to support that with our seed grant, um, just amazing. So thank you um, both for being here. Really, really inspiring.